Hello and welcome to another episode of Batman Review. And this week I'm happy to say I got my hands on a copy of Splatoon 2. So let's see what the amazing Splatoon 1 did to make its sequel even better. So without further ado, let's dive into this inky mess and see what Splatoon 2 has brought to the sea of Switch games. For those of you who don't know because Splatoon was released on the Wii U, and I guess from my understanding no one on the planet bought the system, it's a first person shooter based around spraying ink out of a gun instead of bullets because Nintendo has to stay child friendly saints like they've always been, but to give them a handout this concept was built into one of the most impressive shooters of the last generation. Now Splatoon allows you to cover the map with ink and the team that has the most coverage at the end of the time limit wins. What is more interesting though is that you can change between an almost too cute looking squid kid and an actual squid, allowing you to swim and hide under the ink you spray to sneak up on unsuspecting enemies or just get run over with a roller brush. Your choice. So the question is, what did Splatoon 2 add to make it feel like a better game than the original? And well, the answer is nothing. Splatoon 2 has made pretty much zero changes to the original game and feels exactly like the original. I mean, besides Salmon Run, but I'll talk about that later. Splatoon 2 feels more like a remaster or new Call of Duty game than anything. There are a few new weapons and maps and a new story mode that I have a few choice words for. But besides that, it's the same game. The town square looks the same, there are no new mechanics brought to the gameplay, the lobby system is still a mess, and so much more. So let's talk a bit more in depth on these things. First off, the lobby system in Splatoon 2 is far from good. I mean, it wasn't great in Splatoon 1 and this was their chance to make it better, but they didn't. There's no way to actually match up with your friends unless you all join in on top of each other, and even then you won't always get matched together on the same team. And this is even more depressing when you can't party up in ranked mode either. In the new league mode you can actually make a party before going into a match, but you have to be ranked B- in ranked mode before you can even unlock that, meaning a lot of people playing Splatoon 2 will never see this game mode. And on top of that, you only have like 2 hours of actual playtime with that game mode before you get matched in your placement and you're locked out to receive your rewards depending on how well you did. Now, I'm not 100% sure on League mode, so I'll be honest, there are some things that I may be messing up here since I've only been able to check out articles and gameplay from YouTube since I actually haven't reached the League modes yet in my game. Still, the fact that Nintendo makes it difficult to team up with your friends in a team-based shooter shows that they're still lacking the basic knowledge of how online functionality should work. And speaking of that, let's move on to voice chat. Splatoon 1 had zero voice chat, so I guess having some sort of chat is better than nothing. But I mean, really, is this the best you could do? A headset that plugs into a phone and uses an app. I'm not a huge tech guy, but I think they took this route due to hardware limitations, with their RAM not being able to support VoIP communications or something. But I mean, if I can play a League of Legends clone on my phone and chat with my team at the same time, I think the Switch should be able to do this as well. The biggest issue I have is with class creation. Just like Splatoon 1, there is none. When you buy a weapon it comes with a set of grenades and a specialty move that are bundled together. Nintendo has stated this is so people won't only use specific gear once a best class has been found. But I mean, if you balance your weapons enough, everyone will use what they prefer. So now instead of playing and being like, ooh, I would love to use this gun but with a different set of grenades since I completely hate these ones, I have to use a different loadout entirely to be able to get the grenades I want. It's a flawed system that just takes creativity and longevity out of an otherwise great shooter. The last multiplayer thing I have to rip on is how moving from one match to another hasn't been fixed since the first game. The fact that once a match ends I have to either lock myself into another match or choose to back out at that very moment is ridiculous. I can't just decide that I want to leave a match while I'm in the lobby still searching. No, I can only do that before that or after a match. It's a dumb design since it just makes me restart the game instead of actually playing a match. This is even more annoying since you can't change your weapon loadout while in the lobby or while in a match. 
And on top of that, you can't open the menu while in a match either to back out or change your sensitivity. Let me state that one more time so you can kind of get an understanding of it. You can't change your sensitivity while playing in a match. Do you know how stupid that is? There's just so many little annoyances in Splatoon 1 that they carried over to Splatoon 2 for no apparent reason. Besides the fact that, you know, the developers wanted to make it more kid-friendly or something Nintendo-ish. I, I don't know. The biggest blow to me, though, is the single player. I felt like single player was really lacking in the first game, and maybe they would have brought something bigger this time around. Maybe an actual story or cutscenes, or maybe a more open world idea where you can explore the city of Splatoon, since, you know, the concept of a city made for squids is actually a really cool idea that everyone wants to know more about. Instead, we just got more of one-off levels where you go from point A to point B and kill everything in between. And then maybe try and find the hidden scrolls, which are way more dumbed down in this game than the first one, showing some really dumb one-off things instead of awesome backstory on the squids like the first game did. There is literally nothing special about Splatoon 2 single player, and I would tell you to skip it completely unless you want Callie and Mari's amiibo outfits, since they're locked behind the single player for some reason. Oh, and it's also extremely dumb that for half of the levels, you can't choose what weapons you want to use. Sheldon comes in and he's like, I need data for this gun. Use it now, please. This is an alright concept the first time you get the gun, so you kind of learn how it works, but after you have unlocked it, you shouldn't be forcing me to use it again. Especially if it's the final boss level. <sighs> I would talk more about the final boss and how bad it is compared to the first games, but I may get flagged if I do, so let's skip that. Salmon Run is one of the new additions to Splatoon 2 that mixes things up a bit, and it's pretty much a horde mode. Waves of enemies come at you and you have to kill them all and kill the bosses to collect golden eggs before the time runs out. It's a really fun game type and I would say it's one of the pluses to the new Splatoon. If it wasn't time locked. Like, seriously, why add a new game mode to your game and then make it so you can only play it online with friends on certain days? It's the same garbage they pull with map rotation, making the game more diverse, when in actuality, it just makes playing for long periods of time on the same day super boring, since you get the same two maps over and over again. Oh, come on. I mean, Splatoon 2 is a great game, don't get me wrong, it plays well, it's fun, and the mechanics and ideas behind it are fantastic. Just like the first game, but there's just nothing new here, and it's annoying they didn't improve on Splatoon 1 at all. They really should have advertised it as Splatoon Deluxe, just like they did with Mario Kart 8. I mean, Call of Duty sequels have more originality and improvements than Splatoon 2 did. So let me just get this out there. Splatoon 2 is a fantastic game. It's just a very bad sequel. If you kind of understand what I'm getting at here. Yes, it's super fun and it's crazy and I would tell you to get it if you love the first game, but just don't expect anything new or exciting or crazy. Just expect Splatoon 1 on the Switch. That's really the most I can say about it. Which is a little disappointing for me, but either way, those are my opinions, not yours. So, let me know in the comments below what you thought of Splatoon 2 and how much you hate my opinion. And until then, I'll see you all in the next episode. I just want to give a huge shout out to my top Patreon supporters of the month. So, thank you Zero Master, Thomas Bethel, Grizzly Gamer, and Legend Gary. Without your guys' support, I would not continue to make such fantastic videos. So thank you all, and if you wish to become a Patreon yourself, check the description below for more details.